a la good afternoon to all. It's a pleasure for me to present to you uh, Luciano Megacci. Luciano is one of the master of Italian history of psychology, and uh, he, write, he wrote a lot of books about uh, Italian psychology, but in particular, as, uh, history of Russian psychology, and, very, and other important topics in history of psychology. And uh, today, we, he uh, show you the, probably the main topics uh, for him that is about uh, uh, Vygotsky. Uh, thank you very much. It's a great pleasure for me to be here in Rome to speak again at our society. We had in Rome the third one after Amsterdam Heidelberg, as Ruth <laughs> remembers very well. And, uh, and uh, today is a, a, is, there is a, a little bit of emotion because uh, the most uh, of uh, those people who started with care European care are no more with us. And I remember all of them just here. I was, at that time, I was a research fellow in the Institute of Psychology of the National Research Council. So we had the meeting in the periphery of Rome, but it was... Uh, a very nice opportunity. I was young at the time, and it was a good introduction for me uh, to understand how to study history of psychology, how to do research in history of psychology, because we were accustomed in Italy to have a very big Italian psychologists who, when they became uh, aged, started to write about the history, but without any philological approach, archival approach. So uh, for me, it, it was a, a good uh, lesson to share with uh, these colleagues, uh, uh, methodology, uh, documents, and so on. Um, I was invited to speak uh, uh, about my research on Russia, at that time Soviet psychology, but uh, not only what we know today about this uh, complex issue, but also from the personal point of view. Because uh, I, I don't know if I will uh, be successful in showing that there is an internet connection between how we uh, approach the Russian psychology when there was Soviet Union, and today, after the Soviet Union fall. So, excuse me if I will be self-referential, but for what regards me, there is an interconnection between my experience as a research fellow in the Institute of Psychology in Moscow in the early 70s and the research I did on this topic. What I discovered probably is a modest, but it is directly intertwined with my personal experience. And this gave to my research a specific approach. We can uh, judge uh, good or not good, but at the same time, there is a personal <laughs> approach, depending on the fact that I was for long times in Moscow. I did the experimental research over there. So I did not only uh, research in archive. Of course, also this. Uh, this part of the research was important for the history, but there is a, this persona in, in, in interplay. So, I divide uh, today probably is a longer trip to Russia, to Moscow especially. So, uh, if you are tired at a certain point, we can stop. We have also a video uh, about uh, the 20s, and uh, I organized a, a longer trip, about one hour. So uh, I divided the uh, talk in this part, my personal approach to Vygotsky, and in general, in general to Russian psychology. The second part is what, what really, what actually Vygotsky published when he was alive in the 20s, 30s. This is a big problem from the philological point of view. Then 
what was my main topic, what I defended always, the idea that Vygotsky was especially and particularly first a defectologist, a child of psychology, child neuropsychiatrist, we can say today, and pedologist. Then there is the problem of B.S. Prisornia. For, for the moment, we can say B.S. Prisornia mean homeless children, but I will explain that B.S. Prisornia does not uh, mean directly homeless. And uh, it, it was the topic of my last book. Then I will speak about the problem of uh, what we knew about Vygotsky after the destalinization in relation to what was spread uh, in the Western countries, what we could read, what was translated. And so we had a distortion of <coughs> Vygotsky's figure. And finally, some <coughs> ideas, some thoughts about what I think is uh, uh, very interesting today uh, about Vygotsky, more than about thinking, uh, speech, and so on. I think that I, I wrote uh, uh, some years ago about the problem of normal versus pathological in, in Vygotsky and about his uh, uh, peculiar approach <laughs> to this topic. So we start with my experience uh, in Moscow. You see here it is uh, the building, the entrance of the Institute of Psychology Moscow, founded uh, in 1912. The director was Cherpanov. Cherpanov was an uh, introspectionist, wound uh, students in Leipzig, and so on. When, uh, uh, revolution arrived, uh, all the institutions changed, uh, new directors, new philosophical approach, you know. And uh, we see at the Institute, uh, the Institute uh, is a very nice place because it's just in front of the Kremlin, in the center of the city. So uh, when you go out from the, the door, you see soon Lenin. So this uh, psychology and the Marxism was the book edited by Carnilo for the director, Psychologia e Marxism. And uh, we cannot be wrong because uh, the red flags and so on. And uh, you see here Luria, 23 years old, very young, but at the time it, 23 years old, they were already people engaged. He was secretary of the Russian, sorry, Moscow Psychoanalytical Institution. And then just in the, at the end of 25, arrived Vygotsky from Belarusia, from Gomel, where he was teacher at the Pedagogical Institute. And many years later, the same entrance, but two modest uh, uh, younger students, myself, you see, and uh, <laughs> and left uh, uh, Vladimir Valodia Rusalov. He was a, a, a great uh, friend for me. Introduced me to the Moscow, to the Russia, and and so he was assistant. He unfortunately died just in January this year, and uh, and his family story is very peculiar. Because many times today I will speak about this point. Volodya, uh, 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 his father was a worker in the Urals, but his problem was that he discussed the plan of the production. So his father was sent to Gulag for many years, and Volodya never met his, uh, met his father. But what happened? Because Valodia, his father, was the enemy of the people's enemy, his career was uh, blocked up to the fall of the Soviet Union. The first trip abroad uh, Valodia did was just here in Rome, 
when I, yeah, at that time I was here at the Department of Psychology, after so many years. And this is a, one of the first points that I wish to stress to you. So when we speak about Russian Soviet psychology, we need absolutely to consider that each one has had, each one had his or her story, personal story, and it conditioned the, the research, conditioned the experimental research, theoretical research, and so on. I went to that uh, institute because at that time there was a very important laboratory, very well known abroad because of these two books. It was a, a neo-Pavlovian laboratory devoted to the psychophysiology of individual differences. The leader was Vladimir Niebelitsyn. And uh, Vladimir Yabelitsyn, you see, unfortunately died in October 72. He was very young, very brilliant man. His books were translated, his papers were translated. And uh, I had uh, my degree in psychology within the Faculty of Philosophy at that time was devoted to this program. For this reason, I, I went as psychophysiologist, neo-Pavlovian psychophysiology. According to the great tradition of the Pavlovianism in the Soviet Union, for that reason I went to the Institute. All the Institute and near the Kremlin. I am in the lab with all the uh, apparatus for EG recording. But what happened in '73? A very important event in the history of. Uh, Soviet psychology, but relatively unknown. In 73, that is the year later I was the first time in 72, then in 73 was opened a very, very great institute, depending on the great Academy of Sciences. The director was that man, Boris Lomov, very influential man, non belonging to the school uh, of the old institute, Vygotskian School, Leontiev, Luria, the famous names we know. Lomov was completely different. The so-called Leningrad School, uh, Ananiev and his pupil Lomov. So what happened and what I discovered? Because the lab of psychophysiology moved to the new institute. So I had in parallel the knowledge what is happening in the traditional institute where Vygotsky and Luria were and what was happening in this new institute. To summarize, you see, the, all the institute was devoted to development, psychological development, school, educational psychology, something about social psychology, so and so, theoretical psychology according to the Antief school. What we usually we know about Russian psychology is what happened in that old institute. But in the new institute, Academy of Science, something very interesting uh, happened. Just an example. You see here a very nice book translated in every language by Gagarin, the astronaut Yuri Gagarin, and Vladimir Lebedev. Vladimir Lebedev was a psychologist, Leningrad School, working at the new institute. And he wrote a book with Gagarin. Another example is Alexei Lyonov. Gagarin, you know, was the first man in the space. Lyonov was the first astronaut to walk in the space, out of the fast talk. The institute was especially devoted to secret experimental psychology, military psychology, 
space psychology. In the canteen where we had uh, uh, the dinner, or the lunch, usually the lunch, there was a, a, um, a part in the corner of the canteen in the basement devoted to the astronauts. One time I was a, a motion, motion to be introduced to Leonov, just nice to meet you, I am an Italian psychologist, and because it was a secret place controlled by police. So I had, and I, in the 75, in the 78, I worked in this new institute. So I understood that the Russian psychology was not only what traditionally we knew. And in the new institute, in the new institute, there are the school of Sergei Rubinstein, the philosopher of psychology involved in the discussion material, dialectical materialism, psychology, and the leader, real leader during the Soviet period, during the Stalinism, was Rubinstein head of the Department of Psychology in the Faculty of Philosophy. Rubinstein had two very interesting uh, scholar students. One, Elena Budilova, and the other one, Andrei Bruschinsky. And they worked in the new institute. So in the new institute, the philosophical approach, the historiographical approach, was completely different from that one developed in the old institute. And I was especially influenced for my research by these three books by Dudilova and Brushnitsky. These uh, two books by Dudilova, one is uh, about the beginnings of uh, Russian psychology, the second one, Philosophical Problems in Soviet Psychology. There is also a German translation. So our colleagues who read the German can look uh, at this book, very interesting book. Because it's completely different from the, uh, the classical Luria Leontief approach to their history. And from the philosophical point of view, because they were uh, professional philosophers. So, they discussed about uh, the philosophical principle and the project of a new psychology. The third one was uh, fundamental for me, because in this book, for the first time, I discovered the problem of the real writings, original writings, by Vygotsky. Only in this book, 68, by Andrei Brushinsky, I discovered that there was a problem in the books we were reading at that time. But uh, the turning point for me personally for, was the my, I, I know I am self refresh my familiarity with Alexander Luria. He, he was a kind of a father for me because. Uh, I don't know why, but I, I spent a lot of time at, in his laboratory in his, with his family and you all. And uh, you see uh, this photo is a 75. Uh, it's a poor Shelley who was visiting the laboratory and Alexander Luria testing patients. And you see me writing, uh, taking notes, uh, and uh, Luria was very important for me as a for me, ideal figure of psycho psychologist, how to test, how to approach the patients. But uh, he introduced me to the real uh, figure, how Vygotsky was uh, involved in the history of uh, uh, Russian psychology differently on the way we knew. And you see the first daughter, and the second, the wife Rosa. And the first daughter, Gita, with me in 96, was very generous. And she gave me 
to, to make copies. But that time, in this, this, this episode is in semi, um, April 72, was no per, uh, possible to make zero copies. We need authorization. And uh, uh, Volodya Vladimir Rusalov made uh, for me. So I have the copies of the most important known and the known book by Vygotsky, what we know as a thinking the speech, Denken and Sprechen. Um, but this manuscript disappeared. So what I have to whom is the, the proof that really Vygotsky wrote something at the end of the life, because there was the discussion. At the same time, you see this is the manuscript, and here, uh, okay, uh, in the corner, there's a signature by Vygotsky. And so I started with uh, some collection of readings. <laughs> Renato wished to quote, but uh, and uh, another one, the most important contribution I consider in the history is the, this book, Brain History, with the preface Valuria, and uh, it was a, a great help for my my career when I uh, attempted for positions in university because I had the book with the preface Valuria, and I was uh, yeah. But the, I, what I consider the most important personal contribution is the addition of uh, thinking and the speech. You see this copy, it is a personal copy by uh, belonged to Gita. And uh, what I discovered was that uh, the original first edition published in 34 was uh, regularly changed. So from the first part, this is the first edition of a Vygotsky book. It's about um, 300 pages. We arrived at the one third of the pages. All was cut, all was changed. Not only names, not only Freud, Jung, of course, but uh, for example, uh, if uh, Vygotsky uh, spoke, uh, wrote it this way, probably we might state, probably we state, change Stalinist approach to psychology, not dubitative, non probably, probably. And uh, so there is a problem that still today is a big problem in Vygotsky literature. The first one is Michelinie Iriech. This you can see if you find. The book we will see later was banned, disappeared, and it was published only in 1956, few copies. Four thousands. From this edition 56 appeared this one with the preface by Brunner and the postface by Piaget. But this edition, American edition, very famous, 62, is 150 page after this one. From the Thought and problem you, you, we see soon, thought and the language. Big mistake in the translation. We cannot tell. Thought and language is not Michelinie Riech. Michelinie Riech is thinking like a process. And the speech, I am speaking now, no language, animal language, machine language, no. The language living during the dialogue, during the discourse. But uh, from total language, every, every uh, translation, the first Italian translation, French, German, all non corresponding to the first one. In the 90s, I make translation, 
directly from the, uh, the first one with commentary. And uh, there is only perfect edition, only German, Denken und Sprechen. So at, at, that, uh, at the present moment, we speak about, we write about Vygotsky. And uh, when, unfortunately, I receive articles to be referee, hmm, it's a problem for me. The young people, but I say, oh, you use Russian first, or Italian, or German, but you cannot quote English, because English does not correspond. Is it not Vygotsky? Is it not Vygotsky? Pages, pages, non corresponding, summarize a cat and so on. And uh, please pay attention that Russian audience, Russian students, only at the beginning of the century had finally the complete edition, only 20 years ago. So even in the Russian literature on Vygotsky, there is a problem of quotation. And it is was uh, already written by Bruchlinsky in the book I quoted earlier. Because the Bruchlinsky says, pay attention, you have to quote the uh, 34 edition and so on. But uh, now we change uh, chapter and we say, OK, when I was student, uh, who is Vygotsky? Vygotsky is a uh, Psychology who wrote uh, Thinking the Speech. Surely, what really, actually, Vygotsky wrote when he was alive? From the historical point of view, we need to know what Vygotsky wrote. The discussion of Vygotsky in the 20s and the 30s was about what he actually wrote no about what was published and published in the 50 in the 60s of a course and this we are now close to the main uh, topic of our discussion today difficult childhood i show you here the books edited or written by Vygotsky when he was alive. Please note, there are no psychological books in narrow sense. The first one was about blind, deaf, mute, mentally retarded children, pedagogical psychology, pedology of the adolescent, pedology it's a complex uh, issue we can discuss, if you like, later. Pedology was a general movement in Soviet in Russian, then Soviet Russian interdisciplinary approach to the child, medicine, psychology, education, and so on, in integration. Then when the he died very young, you know, in June 34. And soon we are published something where at home he already was ready to publish, but he, he, he died. And so, but these books you see are again Foundation Pedology, Mental Development of the Child, the Process of a teaching, teaching Learning. Mentally retarded child, diagnostic development and pedological clinic of a difficult childhood. The topic, the main topic was uh, difficult childhood in Russia through the Naye Dietzva. In the title, is a, the, this uh, expression is uh, very frequent, not only in the books, in the, in the journal articles. Does, uh, did he uh, write some psychological books? Yes, but very general books or for a large audience. 
This one studies in the history of human behavior, a primitive and child with Luria, is a general book. Books of pedology are for professional people. This, uh, these books could be uh, read from, uh, by uh, philosophers, linguists, uh, psychologists, and so on. Imagination, creativity, very famous uh, small book, was written by Vygotsky as uh, his sister wrote in the, uh, his, her father's biography, was just written because they needed the money. And so he wrote a wonderful short book, but just for this reason, not for uh, scientific uh, goals. The same uh, we can say for this dictionary. And another one, very interesting, but you, you see from the title, it doesn't belong to the uh, psychological literature. It's an ideological book entitled Fascism in in psychoneurology, and it's relative to some ideological approach, in, especially in German psychology during the Nazism. All the books now we read were not published during his lifetime. And the reason uh, we discuss later. Defectology and pedologists. So when I started to study Vygotsky, I started with the proposal, even here, in, there was a congress in, uh, in Rome some years ago uh, about Vygotsky, and I started. Vygotsky was defectology. Defectologia was, uh, defectologia was a, a kind of a child neuro uh, psychology. He worked in Gomen, Belarusia with uh, blind people, deaf people, mute people. And uh, when the, he went abroad, only one, Vygotsky was abroad in London Congress, uh, the Conference of the Education of the Deaf. And uh, his uh, uh, paper was the principle of social education for deaf and dumb children in uh, Russia. Why there is a Lenin, Lunacharsky, and Nadezhda Krupskaya? Krupskaya, you know, is a Lenin's wife. Ma, but uh, um, Vygotsky was very close to Krupskaya. So he was close to the main political power of the Soviet Union after the revolution. Lunacharsky was the the leader, the chief, the head, the commissariat of the People's Commissariat for Education, a kind of a ministry of education. Vygotsky had office in the Ministry of Education. He had no office in the Institute of Psychology. I thought uh, probably Vygotsky was a professor of the Institute of Psychology. Never. He was never. Because he had administrative, bureaucratic, Organizative office in the Ministry of, the, of Education with Lunacharsky, with the Kruskaya. And he had no direct contacts with the people working in the labs in the Institute of Psychology. And where he published in this journal, official journal of the Ministry of Education, Narodne Prasvecenie. There are very important papers by Vygotsky. So he wrote in, in official political journal. And his career is uh, in the Pedagogical Institute in Gomel, where he was born. And uh, you see, it is another man uh, very, inter very important for this story, Danushevsky. He was already in Gomel. And uh, you see here Institute of Experimental Defectology to study deaf, uh, blind, uh, etc. children. And uh, please uh, again pay attention to this photo and the two other ones. You never, you never see a photo of Vygotsky 
with Luria at the beginning, 25. Then Vygotsky is always in the photos with this kind of a people working in the field of defectology. Never in the Institute of Psychology. Why? Because he, he actually working in this, uh, in this organization for the problems of uh, nationalities and, this, and, and education, uh, handicapped children, and so on. Um, ah, here you see Vera Schmidt. You know who is Vera Schmidt? Some boy. Vera Schmidt was, is famous because uh, he was uh, the psychologist who worked in the, the translation would be orphanage, psychoanalytical uh, school in, uh, in Moscow, where there was a psychoanalytical society. When the, the, the society, the Russian society of psychoanalysis was closed, Vera Schmidt uh, moved uh, to the institute where uh, Vygotsky was. So this is important for the relationship to uh, Vygotsky and psychoanalysis, but this uh, would be another issue. Again, another photo, you see at least Luria, but always in the Institute of uh, um, Defectology. Another one with Vera, Institute of Defectology. So a summary very uh, <coughs> rapidly. What positions Vygotsky had? Pedo Pedagogical Institute. It was 24, 28, he worked at the Institute of Psychology, but he was only that pe period. Then uh, he was uh, at the commissariat, uh, then medical pedagogical uh, station, Institute of Experimental Defectology, child sexual neurology, difficult childhood, and so on. Always in the defectology and the pedagogical, is, pedagogical institutions. But what happened at the beginnings of the 30s? Vygotsky was attacked, officially attacked. And why? For thesis in psychology, he did uh, never wrote any interesting in psychology. So th there is a legend, ah, he was attacked for, uh, for his ideas. Well, uh, no, he was attacked for his positions, political positions. He was close to Trotsky, was close to Lunacharsky, was close to Krupskaya, and when Lenin died and the Krupskaya uh, was alone without protection, Krupskaya was put in the, in the corner and had no more any re remarkable uh, uh, positions in the ministry. And then there were books uh, and uh, uh, articles published non scientific journal but uh, in journal of a uh, large audience uh, of uh, for a general public and another important point is you see here you, see, you can read Vygotsky and Luria Vygotsky and Luria or only Vygotsky never Vygotsky Leon Tief and Luria, the so-called Troika. Because at that time, before he died, Vygotsky was uh, considered or alone or co-working with people in the field of defectology or working sometimes with Luria. Uh, July 4, and it is a the journal Pravda editorial wrote uh, editorial describing what happened the day earlier. There, there was the official central committee of the Communist Party against uh, pedology, but this meant against Vygotsky and the other pedologists. Against Vygotsky like pedologists, not like a psychologist. 
And uh, you see, because they said, uh, the Pravda, you know, the most important journal, official journal, uh, they say because they were using a Western approach to te uh, for testing children, and it is a, another longer story. But with this decree in 56, happened that uh, 93 books were removed from circulation. Never in the libraries, never in the bookshop, and in the yearbook. <laughs> the list is a surprise. For me, for me, I was astonished. No Russian students, scholars in history of psychology, attempted to know this list. So, if you wish to read the sun book by Vygotsky, you did not know, you Russian or foreigner like me. Uh, sorry, I know that uh, Vygotsky probably um, wrote a book on pedology, the librarian, I don't know it happened to me in the, lab in the library in the psychology. They, she went, ah, no, 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 this book, no, 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 no. But she signed, Luciano Meccacci was here to look for. So our colleagues never attempted to verify what kind of books were in the list. Because this was an index, a proof that he or she were trying to discover something that was secret. secret. And uh, Dorena, now full professor in the University of Bologna, she's a historian of uh, Russian uh, education. She, she has a degree also in Russian language. Only few years ago, discovered the list in the archive, and then we publish, and the IST is incredible, it's 93 books, but you see here that books uh, banned, written by Vygotsky, are very few. Maybe the, the book on imagination was not banned, so it, I was free to get this book in the library. No. Also, books uh, that were not banned were banned because they belonged to the same author. So all, all people was prudent, uh, were prudent, uh, pay attention, don't know if it's prohibited or no. So Vygotsky, up to 56, disappeared, even if it was not banned. Now, stop. <laughs> we arrive to uh, a topic where um, Vygotsky's contributions were very remarkable. And uh, about uh, this phenomenon of B.S. Prisornia. This prisoner in English has been translated as homeless, street children, orphans. It's not correct. Because in Russian, there are specific words for homeless, street children, and so on, orphans. This prisoner means a specific phenomenon, specific group of the children. BS means uh, without. Prisor is a very, very rare word. It's difficult to find only prisor. Usually BS prisor. A prisor means uh, care, assistance, supervision, control. So it means uh, children who had no supervision, who had no control. With no assistance, what kind? Social. So, 
a child can live in the family, but without any assistance. So he is not orphan. He's, he's at home. He's not homeless. Nobody cares of him or her, and so on. Because of the First World War, Bolshevik Revolution, Civil War, famine, millions of BS prisoners were in post-revolutionary uh, Soviet, so at that time Russia. Uh, Krupskaya, that minister, wrote in official journal, Pravda, pay attention. We have now, the year is 21, seven millions of IBS prisoners. Population was that time 143. So seven millions of IBS prisoners, non orphans, non orphans, non orphans. This BS prisoner, classified as BS prisoner. Uh, what to do? In Moscow, every month, about 2,000 BS prisoner. Every month. They were arriving from different parts of Russia, especially from the, along the river uh, Volga especially between 21 and 22. How they arrived? These children were waiting along the railways, waiting for the trains. The trains stopped. They took the children. And the, you see, they were so many, so many. No place where to put these children. So they organized on the roof, the place where to put these children. And they arrived especially to Moscow, to Kazan, especially to Moscow. They arrived, they were, they were a, a big problem. A big problem up to 35, when Stalin was the leader. And only a few years ago, we knew that Stalin wrote a decree about Tobias Prisornie. We cannot continue in this way. So we apply as punishment for Bias Prisornie the laws uh, uh, we apply to adults. So since uh, the age of 12 years old, they can, shot, can be shot. As, a, uh, as adults. It's clear. My, and uh, and uh, many of them uh, went to Gulag. And if you look at the inter complete edition of uh, Salzhenitsyn, uh, Archipelag Gulag, there is a, a long chapter on Bies in uh, uh, within the, the camps. I uh, interrupt here because I have now a short video on this prisoner. I prepared with uh, the only material I could find. I wrote a book. This book is uh, just this month published in Russian too. Uh, in St. Petersburg, even there is a war they continue to publish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I am lucky. But uh, I, I was afraid that it was interrupted the publication for the reason you know, understand. And um, material is very rare because uh, Stalin prohibited to speak about Bies Pisoni after this decree. Only in a positive uh, perspective. Oh, there are, there were best bizarre, but now they are good children and so on, because education and so on, et cetera, et cetera. At the beginning, it's a seven, about 17 minutes. <laughs> At the beginning, it, there is no sound, no voice, because there are <laughs> films of that period, uh, 
e when there is non c'è l'audio <laughs> and the, the first part is by the great direct, movie, uh, film director Ziga Vertov and Ziga Vertov introduced the it was the first one to introduce questo a quello è parto to introduce the news in the in the movie so the, the first issue 22 was devoted to Bies Prisorni. Then there are many photographs. Uh, we have uh, to pay attention to the details, how they live, the, how there are some Russian wo uh, words I will translate. Then there is uh, this uh, poem by the great poet Hissienin, because uh, all, all poets, uh, writers, uh, painters, devoted their work to Bies Prisori. It was a, a great topic of that period. And in my book, I collected all this material. At the end, there, there is the same uh, uh, poem by Hesienin, but in a rock version, because it is ballads um, song, sung by Bies Prisori, now in Russia are a kind of rock pop music because uh, they were uh, hooli they are hooligans they were considered and so is considered a, a, if you, now it is a, a bad moment but if one goes to Moscow two three years ago uh, you can uh, meet this kind of of uh, young people like Bies Pisoni in the 20s. Scusa, questo? Sì. Si vede? Sì, sì. So, people from Volga to look for, okay. Is it the, the cover? Because I, pre I prepared it when I, I went for seminars, lecture, introducing my book. Help, help, uh, help children. Help hungry children. Uh, you see, they went uh, where are trains because people probably ate during the travel and put uh, meat, uh, fruit, and they went in this, uh, close to the station to collect. <coughs> Who is the film where you have uh, the extract? Where I found uh, it? Yes, this. Giga Vertov. Yes, I know, but uh, which film? Hey, the first issue of uh, Kino Pravda. Oh. Oh. Kino Pravda. Ecco, uh, this is a point uh, for collecting uh, children, children new. Ah, in this place, uh, the train will stop, so we will be all waiting for the train so we can go to Moscow. And it was like an early newsreel. We call it newsreel in English. Mm -hmm. yes. Shown in the movies. Famous, famous is the cameraman.
without any power, without any force. Power. Uh, lost to his uh, fate. Yeah, fate. Yeah, fate. So they are arriving to a place, this one is close to Moscow, to the south of Moscow. I forgot. At the beginning, Krupskaya uh, wished to have this problem organized by Ministry of Education. Now, by Ministry of Inner Affairs. This means secret, Seka, Augadu, what later KGB. So there was a, a shift in the politics. They were controlled by police, no more by uh, pedagogists, psychologists. Echo this is the entrance of it is a, uh, how to say, comune, comune in English, comune, common, 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 elective living. This one is very important, is a Pagrebin, Matvei Pagrebinsky, he suicided when there was change in, in the organization. <sighs> the age was between 5, 14, 15 years old. After 15 years, they uh, were introduced in criminal bands, adults, or in the secret police were enrolled. They were selected. It's a problem we, we had uh, in the literature, recent literature on Putin. Mm -hmm. When we say, why, why, when I was an officer of KGB coming from, he was. He himself considered to be street uh, child, of course, different period. 
and many during the Second World War were in the avant-garde against the Nazi troops. The quality you see is poor, but here we have a, a, a series of a photo I collected because they, this photo show how, like for instance, they always were in group. One at the beginning when they arrived you know, to new the city, they were alone, but they soon organized in groups. Probably they at the beginning of their travel. And you see, probably a police officer trying, because I, let's go to the orphanage, to this place, but they escaped soon, so it was a problem. And how they survived? Are these only men or all women? We are right. The photo usually are about men. Where women? Yeah. At home. Because they organize a, a kind of a family soon. They were very, as, a, as a they arrived to the age to be pregnant, they were soon pregnant. One of the first in Congress was about the venereal disease and the pregnancy in very small girls because this is the place where refugees by a cab and fresh and they slept and lived inside. Because the, prosti the uh, prostitution was a, a, a big problem, <coughs> and the Survival. and the day the girls were girls, uh, eight nine years old were accompanied by men, so called men, with a prostitution organization, but controlled by police for adults. And it's, so it's very rare to find. But literature is there is a, a lot of only at the beginnings of the 20th, first half of the twenties, when psychologists like Vygotsky, sociologists, they interviewed, they collected material, then all disappear. <coughs> and they also another business was uh, um, drug traffic. Oh, yeah. Like you see always together sleeping. Sometimes I, I, I was told, ah, we had in favelas in Romania, in, in Italy, during the Second World War, we, um, Scunizzi Napoletani. No, it's not the same phenomenon. Because there is a thousand, thousand organized in groups and uh, not living at home. They did, did not live at home with the families. For whom was the film made? Eh? For whom? For... Shot, Gulag, Il. Yes. No, no, era una pecchiera che a chi lo mostravano? Il film. Qual è questo? Yeah, right, because the film is a 22. It was at the beginning to show the problem in order to have uh, intervention by the... Then, or the, nobody, no, nobody, because uh, um, journalists from abroad arrived in Moscow. How, how is it possible? Uh, it, it was not the view of a great Soviet Union. Soon at the station, and they met, they met this kind of of uh, children, eh? always begging, 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 thieving, and so on. And uh, nobody could uh, anymore write on this topic. 
So that film, that film is the only one we have. The, the big problem were the shows. Yeah, yeah. So they used a, a piece of wooden with the newspaper. It is a, a poem you have here. Of course, here it is an Italian version. Because sometimes the, the good part of them, uh, for instance, selling newspapers, cigarettes, like this one. And is he any devoted uh, the, the poem you have here? It's a place, famous place in the center of Moscow. Ikiskaya Tverskaya. Ecco, Pinkerton is a kind of a yellow, a giornale giallo, detective. Yeah, detective. Eh? Detective, yeah. And they dream to be in New York, to be in San Francisco, to another place, paradise. And now we have a song version <laughs> to the contemporary. Ah, the contrast is uh, the period of a new um, economical politics uh, at the twenties, mid, mid the twenties, and you have uh, rich people and. Uh, Сугробы до мороз, сорванцы отчаянны, сладками папирос, в грязных улиц странники, в забаве злой игры. Эх, все они карманники, веселые воры. Эх, все они карманники, веселые воры. Тех площадь на Витинской, а этих на Тверской Стоят с тоскливым свистом, они там Дельгинской Снуют по всем притонам и получив досуг Читают Пинкертона за кружкой пива вслух Читают Пинкертона за кружкой пива вслух Они без пива вдрыз, все бредят в Нью-Йорка, всех тянет в Сан-Франциск. Потом опять печально выходят на мороз. Эх, сорванцы отчаянные, с лотками папирос. Сорванцы отчаянные, с лотками папирос. So, um, um, why we, we spoke about B.S.P. Zorni? Because it was a, a typical issue of uh, the real Vygotsky. This was the problem. You see, it is a, the cover of a Russian edition of my book. It's a propaganda, of course. But why it is covered? Because uh, I appreciate that they put the title orthogonal. Because uh, reading the, the, the book, they said, ah, but this is another word. Because uh, what is very interesting is, you uh, know, what uh, if, if the children 
world is horizontal, bs Prisoni world is uh, vertical, or vice versa. And uh, why? I, I will give you only some uh, point. One is uh, about social organization, and the other one is about language. You see here, this is uh, the book uh, I always, when I, <laughs> I never, is uh, at home, uh, is always with me, because it is very rare, and uh, Luria's present, it was, very, it was published and disappeared. Because it's the only book published, uh, edited by Luria, you see speech and intellect in the rural, urban, and the B.S. Prisoni child. There are many chapters by different uh, Vygotsky and the Luria co-workers. About what? This different world. Yeah. Comparing with people living in the country, living in the, the city, Moscow, but this bizarre is a completely different. And uh, what about a social organization? They uh, were usually without uh, any competence in reading, writing. So what kind uh, of uh, rules they these rules, uh, did the uh, mm, come from the school, from the family, from the society. So it, it was a self, uh, how to say, it's difficult. They invented their rules. And there were some specific um, characteristics. So uh, in Italy, I don't know, in, in your countries, we have educazione civica, how we respect the, the state laws, the family, the religion. They were without religion, without politics, without any knowledge of a society. Because they were five years old, eh? and they organized by themselves. And uh, the first rule, the very, very interesting, is the fact that they recognized soon. I was a Bespesorni when I was a child, now I am a soldier. I meet this man. He is a so, he is a soldier. Okay, no, 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 no. He's a first Bespisori. So uh, this psychologist tried to understand what kind of a sign, what kind of nonverbal behavior was. A, uh, a cues for them to recognize. For instance, there are some uh, autobiographical reports um, from the Second World War. Many of them, yeah, I told you, they, they were in the avant-garde because they had no problem. Snow, cold, uh, to kill uh, people, no problem. So where the avant-garde uh, of, uh, in, um, of the Soviet army? For instance, in Finland, uh, they were used, uh, how to say it in uh, parachute? Uh, parachute? Parachute. They never parachuted. The first, uh, they were uh, 18, 19 years old, thousands of uh, these BS Prisorni for the first time with the parachute, and they went. For them, Okay, what do we have to do? Ah, okay, we go boom, <laughs> and so, so a, a, a different personality, a, a different social organization, and uh, of course, uh, uh, Vygotsky and uh, Luria were interested in language. Here, there is a more splendid, wonderful. I hope that some student uh, who uh, read the Russian can do a, a dissertation on the language, the Espresoni language. I have a lot of material. I, I could use only a part because the problem is this one. They were arriving from different parts of Russia and the Soviet Union. So maybe the area Uzbeks from Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, from Russia, Estonian. And they were children. And they 
spoke only their native language. And they arrived to, uh, here they are incredible examples, to have their a kind of, I would say, Esperanto, Esperanto language. It be a language. And there is, a, uh, I, I put, there is a, my book uh, also a kind of a vocabulary dictionary, you know, because <laughs> they, one, two, three, four, five, is no at the end of a three chitiri piat. No, they, you, you, because it, it, the sound was a mixture of a sound. Very, very interesting. So for uh, Vygotsky and Luria, this was a, an example how, uh, how to show that the mental processes are socially, historically yes. determined. But even in very incredible uh, context, uh, non, uh, you know that Vygotsky was against Piaget. No, you just say that. Vygotsky said, no, Piaget is not interesting because Vygotsky, Piaget spoke about his children in the rich Geneva, but what about the episode? What about the uh, uh, deaf, dumb uh, children? So you understand this. Uh, uh, was the reason, and there is a very interesting material to study further. Echo something about we are going to the end. Mitography after the Stalinization. These are these points uh, very complex. Vygotsky, you know many of them. Uh, sorry, many of you know the expression the Mozart of psychology, the genius of psychology. Why is a genius? Freud is no genius psychology. Kurt Levin. <laughs> Why? Because uh, he, he died very young. He wrote a book that was uh, known only after the death. No, it's not true. Because he was a, a real man working in the Soviet Bolshevik context with Krupskaya, with Lunacharsky, with Div Dam, Besbizor, and children. This is a real. Vygotsky. He's not a theoretician. He's also a theoretician, but first of all, he, he started with uh, environmental problems, issues, and <laughs> to look for a theoretical solution to this problem. This was the first point. The other point now, I think, is very rare to find only in the in the end book, also in my end book of history of psychology published in Italian, I wrote the Vygotsky Luria Leontiev <laughs> school. I was wrong because there was no Vygotsky Leontiev Luria school. There was maybe Vygotsky work, co working with Luria, but do you know Leontiev was against Vygotsky? Now we know. So why was built this? Uh, image of a Soviet psychology corresponding to Vygotsky Leontiev Lurie. Was something who happened in the 60s after Stalin's death. In, in this approach, uh, we have the first act of this drama, Piaget versus Vygotsky. It doesn't um, work as a parallel because it's completely different different context, different approach. Piaget never worked, never worked with deep dumb, best prison children. So it's a normal development, considered universal development, uh, starting with his uh, uh, children, nice children, very brilliant, intelligent children. Second act, uh, I told to Rude that uh, in May Megan, in November, there will be meeting uh, about Brunner, and there, there was the problem that Brunner wrote the preface to this edition. <laughs> it was a problem because that, what, what happened? Happened that what it was the historical, historical, cultural approach by Vygotsky becomes social, constructionist, constructionist approach. Historicheskaya means historical. Does it not mean social? Historicheskaya, historicheski, historical means that there are macro difference in the history, in the mind organization, depending on the social context. So the mind of the Middle Ages is different from the mind of the Renaissance and so on and so on. 
but the mind of Siberia is different from the mind, not from the, from the genetical point of view, but the, the cultural organization, the roots, the state, the, the school, what do you like, the painting, the culture, but it's a macro dimension. Because if you reduce historical to social, we have a problem. Ah. Just, you know, in, in, in this approach I told you with this confusion was depending on these editions, non integral, non complete, in Russian and English. And it, only the book by René, because it is book by Jaroszewski. Now I will show you. A, in a, I will describe, I will say, I will tell you about this event, about Jaroszewski, this small book. They, you see, they were published, this one by Alexei Leontiev, is the nephew of the great Leontiev, and Jaroszewski, when there was Perestroika, published a new, two new books about Vygotsky. Unreal book. Only the book by René, our friend René van der Veer and Jan Balziner was the very, very first book explaining what was happening to Vygotsky during his lifetime. And another, another book I recommend, recommend you, I think is in German too, is by his sister and Tamara Lifano. And I wish uh, to remind you the conference in Budapest. And uh, you know, there was a meeting, uh, the first meeting in Kiron about Vygotsky. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Jaroszewski, Mikhail Jaroszewski was there. And he, he gave, there was also Tamara Lifanova and uh, Dmitry Leontiev, Leon, uh, nephew. Speaking, they spoke about Vygotsky. And Jaroszewski, and then he published this book, never referred to the fact that the Vygotsky books were banned. And so he said, ah, Vygotsky was a genius. Vygotsky was Mozart. Vygotsky was also oh, oh, psychology, Soviet psychology. And we did. We were lacking the red flag in that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, probably I was young, I, I, I could not tolerate this one. And uh, I was very aggressive. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> and uh, this letter for me, it was a premium, premium, the consolazione, you say. <laughs> <laughs> because you see a guitar, Returning from Budapest, Livano told me of your, re, your reaction to the responsible intervention of Jaroszewski. Because Jaroszewski in Budapest, at our society, and this book never speaks about the banning of a, a Vygotsky's book, about pedology, about defectology. It's a minor. Vygotsky was a, the man of a thinking the speech, the man of development psychology. And so uh, you see how just up to now we had this kind uh, of a trump. On now the last slide. Trudene diestva, trudene diestva, difficult child is the key word for me to explain Vygotsky. Vygotsky started with this problem since he was 18 years old, young teacher in Gomel. And he continued up to the death to work in this field. Of course, he gave lectures in psychology, he translated, he, he published, um, he wrote a preface to Kafka, uh, to Bueller, and so on. But he was a parallel. His main topic was Trudonai Diest. And the title of his very important books is true. And the approach we can summarize in this way. Of course, we have a physical defect, 
a blind child, a deaf child. Physical defect, we can consider a, a, a BS prisoner who did, you see, it is, the BS prisoner arrived by train, seemed like coming back from concentration camp. So probably without vitamins, so they had the physical troubles. But this physical background, genetic or environmental, doesn't mean anything because the problem is social. Vygotsky says, make, let us make the example, we are all blind people, like in, at that time, it was Zagorsk. It was an institution, church, Orthodox church institution, for deaf, dumb, blind children. Only tactile, tactile. For them, the world is without a sin, sight, without a sin. They, don't, they, they have the no idea that uh, we can see the world through the eyes, through the, uh, the sight. Only when one child, who, uh, that child who arrived and he, with all senses working, he, this child is considered anormal. Because the normality in, in, in Zagorsk was it is a group of, to be without any sense accepted. So when a handicapped child recognized to have troubles, only when he or she meet an environment where the problem there is, but if they live in Zagorsk, they have not this kind of a problem. But they have to be opened to the other world, to go to the university. And you, you know that there is a famous group of students uh, Inside, um, with a dissertation psychology about uh, this topic, and they were are uh, now professor with uh, without uh, uh, sight, without uh, hearing, and so. On. So the problem is the social, the social organization. How to solve the problem is a non-physical, the only physical approach. Is a link to this uh, point. Uh, the idea that uh, we cannot consider the blind child, for example, blind child is a human being minus sight, subtraction. No, there is a reorganization in the blind child. So we cannot compare what we consider normal because he has the sight with a, a, a blind child because, without, because he is a without. And a one minus uh, sight. Because there are two different psychological worlds. We have to study in their specificity, like in the, in the example of, uh, of a BS prisoner. And finally, normative as a statistical index, as a historical social factor. What, what is the normal? Normal is only what depends on the social context. Mm -hmm. Now we, we know this problem in the, in the field of gender. At the beginning of the century, Freud, in this essays on sexual theory, considered aberration, aberration, maybe in German, the homosexuality, and the, what he called the perversion, abnormal. Today, we have a, another approach to this uh, issue. So it depends on historical periods, social context within historical periods. And this uh, was uh, already discussed by, um, by Vygotsky. And I wrote uh, two, three years ago, uh, uh, article Vygotsky and the psychology as a normative science. In order to show that for Vygotsky there is no universal laws in the field of psychology. No universal laws to apply to
to the universe of the people, but depending on the different context. Ah. <laughs> I was tired. <laughs> Thank you very much. What say the page banned of the book of Vygotsky? Let's begin with names. Freud, Jung, people linked to this uh, social environment, uh, social institution environment, uh, some linguist, uh, linguists, linguists, uh, uh, Jew, Jew people. It is a name. Um, so, a note uh, where is Jung? Cut. Quotation from Jung. Cut. Uh, four, five, six, I don't know. Maybe we can see here in the original. Cut. Goodbye. <laughs> then, uh, it was incredible, uh, incredible uh, work. This happened in 56 edition and eh, second. Uh, where there uh, was written um, pedology, banned in 56, pedology became educational psychology, pedagogical psychology. Pedology is uh, prohibited. Oh, and why? Why? Because uh, uh, no, so, uh, we have to introduce the problem of pedology. <laughs> <laughs> Um, ah, test. Yeah, test. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was never because you see the um, the children, non pathologists, uh, IQ, in, intelligent quotient. Okay. So classification of the children according to I, intelligent yes. quotient. Test of intelligence. No? Uh, then, as I already told, it, for me, it, it was a big, uh, some years of work, because I had to see, the, the, I had three editions, starting from this one, each, each line, because, uh, for example, I, I already told, uh, it was always, um, ah, maybe we could study this point propositive. No, I, I am not sure, but no. When Vygotsky uh, or cut, or I am sure that this is the solution. Maybe the solution might be. So uh, the problem is that in the third edition, they restarted again and uh, um, there is a, a letter by Freud to Willem Fliss, his friend, uh, at the end, uh, I don't know, the year 1897, maybe December, I quoted some time ago, a, Freud wrote to his friend, the, he was introducing the concept of censorship, censura, censorship. And he said, oh, Willem, uh, you know how acts Russian tsarist at that time, censorship, they use ink, ink, um, uh, black ink. Yeah. Black, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, so, Sexual, eh? mm -hmm. uh, black ink. Mm -hmm. So our unconscious acts like black ink. <laughs> but the question was good because I, I forgot this book. It's a book, one of the book on Pies Pisorni. What you see here, black, yeah. <laughs> black ink. I, I, I was in Moscow even after the fall of 
and the week uh, the fall in 91. I was uh, with my wife at the end uh, in December when Gorbachev said the uh, Soviet Union disappeared and uh, in the street you could buy all. And uh, of course, I, 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 and uh, this book is very interesting, not only for the black ink. You see, the page is no more here. Yeah, just a second. Why? And it, it is a control it. because uh, the name uh, ah, Slata Lilina wrote the foreword. But Lilina was uh, the wife of Zinoviev, mm -hmm. shot by Stalin. <laughs> Lilina died many years before uh, Zinoviev was shot, but they say <laughs> it's, a great, it's like Freud, no? Freudian. <laughs> from, ah, uh, uh, there is uh, some uh, parents, some relatives, uh, Zinoviev, you know, all died. Okay, no, no problem. We go to look at, in the libraries where if Lilina uh, wrote something, eh, but. Ten years ago, no problem. We cut. So disappeared. Also, pages, books belong to people already, uh, already dead. And um, these, these kind of books uh, were were not easy to find in the libraries. But it's a typical for these days. So it was really a fascinating talk, and but it opens two kinds of discussion. I, I'm not going to say anything about the, the real interesting picture you presented about Vygotsky, but, but the other thing, the, the uncontrolled children wandering around and so on. What do you think, because I'm Hungarian, and in Hungary, in, in the communist times in the 60s, and well, until the 80s, the educational ideology of Mokorenko, mm -hmm. which was dealing with these children, was very much central as the real solution to all education. So what do you think? And also, was the Mokorenko cult at all being related to the sort of social constructionist interpretation of the Vygotsky heritage? Or how, was, was there ever an attempt to try to relate the two? In, in Hungary, they were related in the minds of many pro-Marxist pro and pro-Soviet ideologies. Yes, 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 yes. Good question. Good question. Oh, my God, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Italy, too. <laughs> Communist Party. Um, OK. Do you remember that man I show you, Pagrebinsky, Matvei Pagrebinsky? He belonged to progressive, open approach. He was close to Yagoda, and when Yagoda then was uh, uh, in disgrazia, he no more accepted by the government, and uh, Pagrebinsky suicide. In parallel, there was the approach by Makarenko. In the moment when there was this shifting from Ministry of Education to Ministry of Inner Affairs, Zerzinski, Jagoda, and Makaranka belonged to this um, police approach. So the community where I visited in Budapest, one of these. Uh, uh, Communities, but not when uh, during the Kiron conference. Um, where there was a kind of a, no concentration camp, but military, and there were many problems. But the discipline was so strong that some of these BS prisoners could uh, move to another lifestyle. This is true. When 
Stalin said, or we stay, you stay regularly in, in the communities with Makarenko style, with the building of a new Soviet man, the family, the discipline, soldiers of the, the Soviet Union, new soldiers of the Soviet Union, or you go to the prisons or you are shot. It happened at 35, this, this moment. But what do we know now, maybe 10 years ago, no more, no, maybe 15 years ago, that Makarenko had the big problems because uh, the community of Balshevo we have seen in the film uh, at south of Moscow, there were um, Desprisornie who became uh, even them teachers, uh, assistants of uh, new children. They were in the year is a 38, were shot all, all, only now. Only now we know. So Makarenko is a legend. Yeah. Is a legend. And uh, uh, the same uh, correctional community we have now in Soviet in Russia are the same of that period. And they continue to have this kind of a military organization. There are many books uh, um, I, Romanzi di formazione, Bildung uh, Roman, Bild, Romanzo di formazione. Uh, when uh, young, uh, uh, this education, no, I was a criminal and then, and then I. Uh, and uh, resocialization. Eh? Resocialization. Si, sì, resocialization. Bildung no, Roman. Bildung Forman, Bildung Roman. Bildung Roman. Uh, there is a book. I, I, my book starts with this problem. Because there was a book, uh, um, say, uh, 60s, 60s, devoted to past Biespisorie, who became great scientist, great general. Great uh, astronauts, not you, <laughs> completely false. Mm -hmm. And it was discovered after the fall of the Soviet Union that it was uh, uh, completely, uh, we are surprised. But uh, you see, Renato was uh, reminding me that he, even here in Italy, Communist Party, and I was a member of the Italian Communist Party, so I, I know directly up to the first 80s. And we, for us, young, <laughs> young pioneers, the model was Makarenko. Mm -hmm. But it was, <laughs> here in Italy, it was not possible to have, a, to have a kind of a Makarenko pedagogy, even if we have uh, just in the same... Uh, yes, in Villa Mirafiori. In Villa Mirafiori, you have uh, one of the most uh, nice, nice men, but he thinks that he thinks that there was a paradise uh, in Makarenko. It's, it's not true. Yeah, we have... Uh, so... Um, there is a, a, another book in Russia, incredible, Dieti, Dieti Gulaka, Children of the Gulag. Terrifying, terrible. So it, it was a, a, not only in Hungary, Ukraine, uh, because uh, Kharkov, there was a big uh, community, Poland, of course, Hungary. Okay, good. Is it fair to say that the, um, the reason that pedology had to be condemned and Makarenko had to be raised was that uh, pedology uh, had to be critical and um, its mathematical quantitative methods were informed by foreigners and foreign work, whereas Makarenko uh, would be a way of celebrating the Russian-Soviet spirit and um, 
and it's it is something uh, you know it's more celebratory uh, or more uh, wonderful miraculous maybe and uh it's something from our own soil and our own um and our own spirit yes i could I completely agree. It is a crucial point. Uh, when we read uh, Vygotsky's work in pedology, the approach is scientific. Yes, yeah. scientific. If uh, these people coming uh, from Uzbekistan are at a level, they cannot put together with the Russian people, uh, Vygotsky, Luria children together and uh, to speak Russian. They, have, they need to be studied, to, to introduce the two different levels of learning and so on. And you know that at the early 30s, why it is a, a criticism where in the early 30s, when there was the reform of a school in the Soviet Union and the, how to say, homogenization, we can say, homogenization. So, you belong to poor, you belong to rich, you belong to Uzbekistan, to Turkmenistan, to Russia, to big family. All are the same. But Vygotsky said it's not. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Let go. Thank you for such impressive presentation. I am from Lithuania, so I fully understand uh, what you want to say. But still, I would like to hear your um, opinion. Why did the Soviets need such legends as uh, Makarenko? Because, well, uh, my idea is that they um, wanted to show um, the case of Besprezornia and uh, such kind of pedagogy to another kind of normal, uh, meaning not to Besprezornia, but for the rest of society. Um, oh, oh. Do you agree with this? Or? Yes, I, I agree. No, but um, link to, to this uh, point, we have... Uh, to, um, to have a clear, you know the day, and you know Lithuania. You are young, uh, maybe the, the period uh, I refer to the fifties, the sixties. But if we consider that up to eighty nine, there was no Freud, Freud, yeah. Yeah. yes, yeah. Back. <laughs> pocket, no, there was no Freud. So all uh, psychology, all educational psychology, uh, they did only in the new institute. Because the new institute devoted to the space, to military, when Lomov, Boris Lomov, we, we are close friends, typical uh, strong Russian, like uh, uh, the president uh, Yeltsin, like, and they said, Luciano, ah, Vygotsky, Makareko, they belong to the past. For the new Soviet Union, we need ergonomics, uh, social psychology, and so on. When, whereas in the old institute, they continue to say, Vygotsky, Leonte, Veluria, is not true, <laughs> because it was another story. And without knowing anything that was happening in the Western countries, because there were no books. I don't know, you were, you were, were yeah, probably Lithuanian, but uh, as far as I know, I have all the many, 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 the, 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 the translation, they started with the translation, and the people who, I had the problem with the Russian, of course, because I thought to speak English when I arrived, and I was 25 years old, but beginning from the, the, the water to the uh, bed, to the train, I had this, to learn through Russian because nobody spoke English, even in the, in the Institute of Psychology, not in the new institute. So the, the psychology link the social education, real problems, everyday life in Soviet Union, they have the not expertise, at least uh, for what I, I could see. But so 
So for them, Makarenko was a new approach. And ah, sorry, no, on the ultima slide. <laughs> sorry if I speak Italian, but I am tired. <laughs> I am aging. My age does not permit it to. <laughs> You are historian, and these people, only these people, I choose. So we do history, Italian psychology, German, Dutch, and what you are American behaviorism, and so. But what is the problem? You see that these people, Zalkin, Josefina Schiff, Spert, Spirai, Lydia Luria. Even Luria's sister. So when we are, I, I was young, I was a modest young student. My, it was, I realized it was difficult to speak about this problem because his father, his sister was in the gulag. And why you have no, you have, have you the book by me? Because no, I have no, I didn't understand. So it was the problem to write about this especially this period, after, up to the 50s, 60s, because all this, it is only a narrow, restricted list. The, the, the Lydia Luria, because her husband was shot, was an engineer during the, the period of, of the great uh, trials. And uh, I discovered only some years ago that Luria's, Luria's sister was in the Gulag. He never, never wrote, never said. And it conditioned the, their personal reconstruction because they did not wish to speak about it. I have such stories too. No, Bibia did not answer. No, it is. Okay. Well, I haven't really read Vygotsky very much, so I'm asking a kind of ignorant question. But uh, I am curious, you were talking about the normal and the pathological, and of course, Georges Kamihem, uh, French historian of medicine, wrote a book, sad title. Uh, I'm just curious if you could elaborate on, you know, if it's possible to, I don't know how much you wrote on that per se, uh, but uh, could you elaborate on that issue? You say that uh, the normal, he considered the normal to be kind of a statistical artifact. Uh, was there any sense that this was a kind of binary opposition or something? I'm just curious about those concepts. Um, there was, uh, maybe I start with this uh, reference to a work by Vygotsky that was published only in the 80s, entitled The Crisis of Psychology. You know, in the, in the 20s, there were many books and papers, uh, Kafka, Bueller, Drish. Um, yeah, right, fish, fish. Um, about the crisis, because different schools, different epistemological, theoretical approach, and so on. That time, Vygotsky was studying this problem, and the, but from different point of view, and the, we discovered only when we read his uh, uh, crisis, published in '82. And, but he wrote in 27. And he said, the problem is not the different theoretical epistemological approach. For psychology, the crisis depends on the fact that it can solve some practical problem and no other. The school can solve this problem and no other. So the problem is that the fragmentation of schools is linked to the solutions given to real social problems. 
second. Okay, we can solve this, uh, this problem. No, because the solution is linked to the historical context. So the solution of a society could give to mental illness in the past, at that time it was normative, the approach, classification of mental illness. Today, in the different historical context, we need a, a, a different approach. So psychology is a no a science in the, in the narrow sense, fixed. So we can consider that some Newtonian laws, at least, are always the same, even if they, we change the context, the historical context. The, the psychology is the, um, directly linked to the moment it works. So normative, it, there is a, we can say, the three, that tree is abnormal because that kind of a plant, from genetical point of view, is that is fixed. No, normality changed always in the historical context. So psychology cannot be normative in, in, in absolute uh, sense. This uh, is a problem, I think, uh, crucial today in our society in the period of globalization. And it reminds the problem Vygotsky and Luria discussed about, the, you know, during the expedition, they organized to Uzbekistan. Because the problem was, with kind of a normativity, not only mental development, but in social behavior, social relationships, these are historical parameters. So, Vygotsky from Moscow cannot go to Tashkent in Uzbekistan and to say this is a normal and this is pathological because normal pathological depends on, the, on, on their context. So there is a flexibility in the approach always. So for uh, Vygotsky, psychology is a no science in the sense of a physical, natural, not because it does not use experiments, lab, quantitative approach, but because the topic is, is always changing during the contest. During, during. So I think that the, the example today is a gender. In our society, Western society, because if we go to another society, we cannot approach with the same terms. That is a, without so any sense. I don't know if I could answer. Also in the, also in the Vatican uh, State. <laughs> also in the Vatican State. We, <laughs> they have, they have the, the, uh, good normativity. They know how to. They know all about sex. <laughs> so strongly. I don't know if you are trying to speak in English, uh, but if you want, I can do it after in Italian. Okay. Uh, but I'd like to know more about the second edition, what happened with the second edition that was translated to, to English. Uh, because everything that you say is very interesting. I think now we have to reorganize our liberties about uh, all this sector about Soviet psychology after this. But, uh, <laughs> but what happened with the second edition to be so reduced? Uh, this is you, you, the second edition, you, you refer to 56. Speaking as, as yes, speech it's, it's about speech and, and language. Thought. Yes, about uh, language and thought, yeah. or speech and thought. No, for, uh, the, the American one or the Russian? The American one or the Russian edition? The second the one. Russian edition. The Russian edition was half, half as big. Uh, if uh, ask about the, that. This is, was uh, the first one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you, uh, uh, you can see, uh, and you see many, many, many lines, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, when you see the second edition, 56, there were the changes I told, uh, words, uh, names, uh, syn uh, syntactical uh, argumentation, and, uh, and uh, it's incredible. 
But the problem is incredible. The problem is the third edition. Because the new edition, American edition collected works is based on the third one. But the third one does not correspond to the second one. And the second one, <laughs> and the, uh, but you use the manuscript. No. OK. The manuscript uh, regards only the preface and the last chapter. Because this book, uh, first edition, is a collection. Mm -hmm. It's not a book. Yeah. It's a in Russian, Sbornik. It's a collection. What, what, what material? Mm -hmm. Preface to Keller um, paper, mm -hmm. preface to uh, dissertation on concept of formation, put together. Mm -hmm. Vygotsky, at the end of the life, wrote the preface to this collection and the last chapter. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So when we read this one, ah, the, the last chapter does not correspond to what was written 10 uh, years before. And nobody says, because it, it was sold like a book, uh, originally born like a book. No. And uh, there are two papers, one by me, myself, about quotation, because what, another point, I forgot. In the, in the manuscript, especially the last chapter, Vygotsky, according to, for instance, a great linguist, Jakubinsky, he wrote the editors, Consider the quotation by Yaku, from Jakubinski, by from Vygotsky, personally from Vygotsky. So they did not recognize that it, it, this statement did not belong <coughs> to Vygotsky, but to Jakubinski. And the, the most famous, uh, every, everybody knows, I read in English. You 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 find it everywhere. Ah, Vygotsky said this one. It's not true. Ah, it's a cut. It's a cut in English edition. I why it is I don't find it. There is a, a, a I translated from Russia. Word is in the consciousness, like a sun ray in the water, mm -hmm. in a drop of water. This uh, statement you, we find in every paper on uh, Vygotsky. It, it uh, does not belong to, uh, to Vygotsky. And I wrote a paper about the real source. René van der Veer and uh, Ekaterina Zavieshneva, very brilliant uh, scholar student, she, she made a dissertation about the crisis of psychology, and they published together the notebooks by Vygotsky, unpublished notebooks. They uh, made the same analysis, and they discovered that in this last chapter, many parts belonged to Jakubinsky and the other people. Of course, Vygotsky wrote uh, this statement from Jakubinsky, this statement from Solovyov, this statement from, uh, from the poet Mandelstam, the editors, because these uh, authors were forbidden, they say, ah, Vygotsky wrote. <laughs> you understand. This, uh, uh, I don't understand why there are no American or English a publisher wishing to translate the integral, because we continue to uh, integral, at, at least thinking in the speech. Now, there is a new book uh, by Myra Barts, Vygotsky, the teacher, 
is a, she is an English uh, teacher published by Routledge, and uh, she lived in Italy many years, so she speaks fluent in Italian. And uh, she introduced uh, the new translation. Uh, zone of a uh, proximate uh, development to give uh, the sense of a temporal uh, perspective. Uh, so there were, there were problems of a cut, ontology, problem of uh, how even uh, there, there was a problem with Piaget school because uh, they our students, our colleagues, even in Italy, consider Vygotsky like the social um, side of the development, the cognitive development shown by Piaget. Mm -hmm. Socials versus uh, genetic. It's taught that way in every course. And, but, but Piaget, of course, knew the effect of the social because he's uh, uh, children who went to school, who went to the cinema, went to museum. Uh, is a, is a, the problem? Uh, ah, another point, uh, and, and, and I stop. Only French philosopher Francois Sev understood. Sev. He showed that uh, when uh, Vygotsky linked to Marxist philosophy, says the development, the zone of a pro so-called proximal development depends on social relationships. Savage, no, he is referring to what Marx meant, no social, I am his friend, his friend, family, social, uh, this context. No, the social relationship from the economical point of view. What it means? That the social, economical, social organization, Uzbek village, is uh, the ground for the social relationship, for the social development. But we have uh, to start from what, what kind of economical production? What kind of uh, economical organization? So in rural village, where there is, a, at that time, Soviet uh, Korkos organization and so on, change the, the social relationship, but depending on the economical organization. You are a worker, you, are, uh, you work in a factory, you work in, and so on. So, is more basic than the abstract general idea of a social. Because social, uh, uh, can you say, is a trivial. Say, social relation, uh, uh, why not? Abstract idea of social. Uh, no, no, real. Bis uh, prisoni. Uh, what kind of, of economic organization? Prostitution. Uh, interesting. So, <laughs> so the, the, the social relations with these children with adults was depending on the fact that they survived because of the prostitution. So, the, of course, it's a Marxist approach. But this is Vygotsky. We cannot be, agree. But this is a Vygotsky. First of all, what is the economic organization where it is family, it is school, and, and so on? Returning to Piaget, in, in, in this six studies about psychology, the first uh, work is about his conference in 1965. In, I don't know exactly where in the USSR, but it's, it's Moscow. Yeah, yeah. It's Moscow. Uh, but it's interesting because uh, different from this image that you generally have of Piaget as a kind of pure constructivism without social, in this conference, he highlights so strongly the, 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 the presence of social aspects that are very important to development. During this period, do you know something about the context of this conference in 1965? If it's a moment 
a different moment when they're trying to uh, to return to the gods or create a kind of bridge or do you know something else about this moment? It's a complex uh, story, mm -hmm. but uh, I prefer to start. You know, with this, if you uh, because there was a, a trip to Moscow with Zasu, Valon, and Pesci. Then the uh, 1888 Congress in Moscow, World Congress, yeah. okay. and the picture was of there was there of there, of course. No, but uh, I wish to start with another point. When uh, this uh, ah, well, I forgot Brunner, but when. <laughs> When they disappeared, there was preface by Brunner, but this by Piaget commentary was uh, printed. Hello? Uh, <laughs> 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 I am afraid. <laughs> no, no, please, please, no, Renato. It was put. Eh? Yes. Because the commentary. Legit. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> Included in the volume. It, 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 it was uh, not printed together. I want to say, in, in cert, in, in cert. In cert. In order, in order to Free, freely. Freely, freely. <laughs> freely in cert. But, uh, please, you uh, speak uh, English very. Please, uh, at, at the, just uh, two lines at the beginning. Und wie Gott? No, uh, not the frontispiece. The... Here. Uh, it's not without sadness that an author discovers, 25 years after its publication, the work of a colleague who has died in the meantime, when that work contains so many points of immediate interest to him, which should have been discussed personally and in detail. Although my friend Luria kept me, uh, kept me up to date concerning Vygotsky's uh, sympathetic and yet critical position with respect to, to my work, okay. I was never <laughs> able to <laughs> read it all. <laughs> so, what a kind of a problem here? Mm -hmm. Well, Luria was very close to Michael Cole, I think. Yes. And you already shown that Luria had reasons to be circumspect and careful about the way he said things uh, regarding Leontief and regarding Vygotsky. So it's it's all a big muddle uh, made necessary by the late Soviet environment, I think. No, it is a perfect, but there is a problem with Piaget many years before. Um, the um, book by Piaget, Langage et la pensée chez l'enfant, 23, was published at the beginning, at the early 30s, in Russian. With the preface by Vygotsky. Uh -huh. <laughs> Vygotsky, not the younger Piaget. Uh, yeah. And the Vygotsky, the first chapter, yep. is that preface. But only if one look at the first edition, discover what? Vygotsky, eh, I criticized uh, Piaget. And I am happy that Piaget Vygotsky eh, was alive. Piaget recognized my criticism. Oh, so Piaget did no Vygotsky, non depending on Luria, the New Age. <laughs> but in, why? Because, because Piaget wrote the preface to the Russian edition where Vygotsky wrote the preface. When I, I discovered that 
here and they said in, in Geneva, uh, one, of, one of the first congress on Vygotsky, there are many, many Piaget students still alive. Ah, 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 Ma Piaget knew Vygotsky criticism very early, not only when <laughs> it was introduced by, by Luria. And they say, no, it is not possible. Piaget, they say, because he are, no. And uh, what was the problem? Another pro philology, story, historiographical problem. In the first edition of the Piaget bibliography, where there is the list of all the translations of um, Piaget books, was omitted the Russian edition. <laughs> Only when Piaget died, there was a new edition. I don't know if, I don't think to, to have been so influential, but it was put that there was a Russian edition of Piaget in the early 30s. And so, uh, uh, these uh, pupils, uh, one especially, uh, it was very aggressive to me. Yeah, she never, never knew about Vygotsky. So he, he, yeah. is it not true? No. So uh, it is another point I don't like uh, in this story. But and uh, is uh, so you are right. But for what regards the fifties and the sixties is a perfect what you say. And in the Luria, Leontief wished to have uh, finally a new position economical position. And there was a problem when the government said, this kind of a psychology is not interesting for us. We organize a new institute. And there was a new conflict. OK. OK. That's all. Thank you, Shannon. <laughs>